I can welcome everyone out to Warrensville Baptist Church this Tuesday afternoon. Just thank God he's given us a great day to come out to worship and to praise him. Amen. Amen. I'd like to thank you for being here. And I, if you're visiting with us, we, we uh, welcome you this afternoon. If you need to know where our restroom facilities are at, just go down the steps here behind the door and go to the right and you'll see them uh, around the corner, okay? But we're here for one reason and one purpose only, and that's to worship and praise Jesus Christ tonight, amen? That's the whole reason we've come out, and I appreciate David coming and being with us tonight, and the praise team going to sing for us this afternoon. Miss Janet, Miss Janet has an announcement. Would you like to stand and... Well, I've aggravated most of them, but I didn't have quite enough cards to go around. And I'm sure that uh, most of the people that I spoke with earlier did not know that we in Ash County are getting a hospice house that will uh, serve seven patients. The ground was broken today. Uh, and the goal had been eight million. So far, they've collected over five million. Amen. Okay. <laughs> and I'm sure you've done a great job. Amen. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that with us. Um, man, you just don't know how important that is to you have a family member and you go through it and hospice comes in, takes care of them. And you know, and, and I've seen that, we've dealt with that last year firsthand with Tina losing her brother and we were so thankful that the comfort that they gave him in that last few days. Okay, uh, I'm gonna pray and then we'll stand and have a congregational song. And then after the congregational song, if the praise team would just come forward after that, okay? Father, we just love you today. God, we just thank you for loving us first. And Lord, we just thank you for this night of revival, God, that you've given us. And Lord, we just pray right now, Lord, that as we save so many times, God, that revival's not for the lost, but God, revival's for the Christian that's lost something. And God, I just pray right now that you just speak through Brother David. God, as he just take the words that comes through his lips and Lord, just want to apply them to my life tonight, Father. God, I just want to draw closer to you each and every day. God, just right now, be with us in every, th every word that's sung. God, every word that's preached, I pray, it's just to glorify your son, Jesus Christ. God, we just love you, we honor you, and praise you. For it's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being here tonight. Over the past few nights, we've had some really really beautiful song services as we've been doing revival and lord willing and spirit leading we'll have that again here tonight so if you'll stand with us in your hymnals in front of you page 493 page 493 in your hymnals sing out for the lord this evening we praise thee O god for the son of Sins and hath cleansed every stain. 
Revive us again. Verse 4. Revive us again. Fill each heart with thy love. May each soul be rekindled with fire from above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Amen. If you'll stay standing and your hymnals again, just turn over to page 296. Page 296. We'll sing all three verses of this song. Page 296. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that He is living, no matter men may say. I see His hand of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer, and just the time I need him, he's always near. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart you ask me how I know he lives he lives within my heart all right sing out verse three rejoice rejoice oh Christian lift up your voice and sing eternal hallelujahs to Jesus Christ the seek him, the help of all who find. No other is so loving, so good and kind. Sing it out. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation seated this evening. from Fishing Creek Arbor Baptist Church. We come with David. And um, there's a lot of us not here, but that's okay. We um, do not come for ourselves. We come to lift up 
the name of Jesus, which is a name above every name. That is what we do. That is why we are here. We are not singers. Um, We are here to praise him and worship him. Um, So in these songs, um, this, this, this next song is from Psalms 8116. And it's honey in the rock. And it's, you know, the Lord will give us and provide everything that we need because he is everything that we need. Um, When I walked in, personally, I saw Butch and Debbie. Where are they at? Yes, Butch and Debbie. And Butch and Debbie, Butch was my piano player 30 years ago when we was at Mission Home. When I was 19 years old. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. So I was like when you were five or six. Well, yeah, when I was nine. (laughs) I love them, and it just brought back a whole bunch of memories. Love you guys. Um, So sing with us if you know it, but, but don't listen to us sing. Please listen. Listen to words, and let's prepare our hearts for the message that God has for us tonight.
and angels bow before your throne and all
the source of the sound.
if you know this next one, y'all can sing along with us and worship with us. Yeah, this is this is for David. This is his song.
Amen. Thank you for singing that. Does anybody have a word on their heart tonight before we get started? Hallelujah. Amen. Anybody at all want to praise the Lord? And I just give him praise tonight and want to worship him. Amen. If you're not here to worship, I don't know what you're here for. Amen. We come for one reason, one reason I'll ask worship and praise our Savior. Amen. This young man that's getting ready to come and speak to us, we've been through a lot together for many, many years, and I long for the days that we'll spend together because the Bible tells us that we're all going to the same place. Amen. We'll all be there one day if you know Jesus Christ is your Savior. Amen. I ask you to pray for Brother David as he comes and uh, be attentive and listen to his word. He's, he's one of the best that I know of out there. I'll just be honest. I've listened to a lot of preaching, um, but I like bragging on him because uh, he's, he's, he's one of the best. His, as I told you yesterday, uh, that his daddy was such a great mentor to me. And, uh, and I love this family so much, even when his mother would run me off. I still loved her. <laughs> and you just have to know the reasons why, and we're not going into that. But Brother David, you come and bring the Word of God, brother, and we appreciate you being with us. She ran him off several times. It's good to be here this evening. It's good to see Butch and Debbie. Good to see Dan and Lisa. And good to see each and every one of you. Thank you, praise team, for making the trip up the mountain, for doing such a wonderful job. Uh, I love these guys. I love these guys. And uh, every Sunday, uh, they don't just sing with their voices. They sing with their hearts. And they just kind of, the Lord uses them to escort us to the throne room where we can just praise him and worship him for a while. And I appreciate you guys. I love y'all and did an amazing job this evening. Jackie Stone is led by the Lord, I do believe, on most things. But there is no way the Lord led him to have Rick Tomlinson last night and me tonight. The Lord just wouldn't tell somebody to make Rick Tomlinson preach the night before I have to preach. And I already know a lot has been said. I don't know exactly what. But if you were here last night, don't believe anything Rick said before he opened the Bible. Okay? And we'll just leave it at that. But it's good to be back at Warrensville Baptist Church. And it's so good to be here this evening. We're praying for Tina. I hate so bad that she's under the weather. She can't be with us. We love her dearly. Take your Bibles. Turn to Isaiah chapter 6. A passage that you are quite familiar with. Isaiah chapter 6. And what we want to talk about just for the next few minutes this evening. Isaiah. Now, this guy, he, he's like, he's a young person. Maybe upper teens, lower 20s. But he has been to temple all his life. He lived and grew up in and around the temple at Jerusalem. Going to temple, going to worship was a very normal thing for young Isaiah. But on this particular day, he goes to temple and it changes his life forever. Can any of you think back at a time in your life when you went to church and just on that day at church or that night at church, the Holy Spirit got a hold of you. Maybe it was the night or the day you got saved or maybe it was something else that the Holy Spirit did. But he changed your life forever because of that church service. Well, that's what Isaiah has. There's a drastic change. I heard tell of some, uh, some hillbillies that was way, way, way back up in the mountains. And uh, the, the, the papa of the hillbillies got the boys together and said, let's just go down to town. Let's all go down to town together and, and get in the truck. And go. They, I hear they got a great big mall down there at that city, at that town. And I've never seen it. I've heard about it. I won't go look at it. 
they pulled up in the parking lot and it was packed with cars and they this was like a three-story mall great big mall and they went in and they just walking around and looking around all these places to eat all these stores all these lights everywhere and they got to the escalator and that kind of that kind of tripped them out they had never seen one of those escalators before so it took them a while to figure out you know how to get up and down that thing and then they was walking around down there on the bottom floor and they they come to the elevator and they was fi trying to figure out what this thing was. Well, all of a sudden, the door opened. And when it opened, this, this older lady that was up in years, and um, she just kind of eased on real slowly onto the elevator, and the door shut behind her. Well, the, the dad and the boys, they stood there for a few minutes. And then all of a sudden, the doors opened again a few minutes later, and out walked this absolutely drop dead gorgeous young lady and the boy said well pop let's keep looking he said no john boy run back up to the mountains and fetch your mama <laughs> he said why he said well, i don't see what happens when i run her through that thing <laughs> so but this changed isaiah's life when he went to temple on that day we're in isaiah chapter six if you would please stand for the reading of the word. It's about 740 B.C., just a few years, about 13 years after Romulus and Ramus had been said to have founded that great, great city just to the east called Rome. A great historic event. But on this particular day, and though he unknowingly knew it when he went into temple that day, it was going to be just as great a day in history that would change his life and many others forever. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and the train or the shul of his robe filled the temple. Above it stood seraphim, each one had six wings, with two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he did fly. And one cried to another and said, Kavosh, 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 holy, holy, Holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door were shaken by the voice of him who cried. And the house was filled, not with the charcoal gray smoke that we will see coming from the chimneys in Ash County as it continues to get colder and colder and colder, but with the beautiful radiant Shekinah glory cloud that represents the presence of God. And the whole house was filled with this. So I said, woe is me, for I am undone, because I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hands a live coal, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. He touched my mouth and said, Behold, that has touched your lips, and your iniquity is taken away, and your sin is purged father in jesus name we ask and pray once again that you're blessed you're inspired you're anointed your infallible word would go forth under the direction guidance and anointing of your holy spirit and that your holy spirit will use the word of god tonight to speak to our hearts and god we pray that we will get some new fresh touch of revival in the sanctuary at warrensville Baptist Church, though it may not be the exact same thing that Isaiah was able to experience in 740 B.C. Give us a new, fresh touch and experience this evening. In Jesus' name, all God's people said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Four things that happens when Isaiah goes to temple this day that if we could just somehow touch a couple of these things by being in revival, at Warrensville Baptist Church tonight or any night this week, if some of this could be applied to our lives and we could take it home with us from this revival, dear friends, that would mean true, true, heaven-sent, Holy Spirit-filled revival will have occurred. First of all, we want to notice Isaiah. We see his comprehension, and it's the comprehension of a holy encounter. His comprehension of a holy encounter. And when he gets to temple, the first thing he recognizes is God's position. In the year that King Uzziah died. Oh, by the way, last good king of Israel. Virtually the only good king of Israel since King Solomon. 
And so this is a very important, specific time in Israel's history. The good king, King Uzziah, has died. And everybody in the land is wondering, what are we going to do now? Who's going to lead us now? We've had a good king. What are we going to get next? A lot of confusion, a lot of unrest. Does any of that sound anything like the country we live in today? Who's going to lead us? Who will be our leader? We cannot put our confidence in leaders. We must always put our confidence in King Jesus. He's on the throne. And we do things as Christians. But we see as uh, Uzziah had been king for 52 years. And even though he was a good king, he had actually been stricken with leprosy because of his pride. And he died of leprosy. That's in 2 Chronicles chapter 26, verse 19, 2 Kings chapter 15, verse 5. But everybody's upset and worried about their leadership not being in place anymore with King Uzziah's death. But Isaiah says, I went to the temple, and instead of worrying about my leader as my King Uzziah, I saw another leader. I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up. And the train of his robe filled the trip, the temple. Uh, the Hebrew word there for train is actually shul. And it means the bottom hem, the bottom edge of his garment. In other words, what he's saying is, when I went to church this day, I saw Jesus. I saw the Lord. He was on his throne. He was high and lifted up. And he was so great. He was so mighty. He was so magnificent. Only the hem of his garment could fill the temple. He was so big. Who's Uzziah? I got King Jesus. Who's Uzziah? King Jesus is on the throne, and he's filling his temple, and he's still filling his churches. When we come together for church service, when we come together for revival, when we sing praise songs and worship and worship him, God inhabits the praise of his people, folks. And if we're willing and we'll pray for it and we'll long for it and we'll desire it, God will still fill his house. And he'll fill our hearts when he fills his house. Psalms 29, 9. In his temple doth everyone speak of his glory. See, revival is all about Jesus. Church is all about Jesus. Warsville is all about Jesus. The songs we sing, as they told us a while ago, it's all about Jesus. He sees God's position, but then he witnesses God's praise. Verse 2. He's having a holy encounter. He's comprehending that God's in this place. God's on the throne, and God's moving. God's praise. Verse 2, above it stood seraphim. By the way, the I am on there makes it plural. You don't have to put an S. The I am makes it plural, and besides that, it's not good grammar, and it would be redundant. But uh, this is one order of the angel. Angelic, the angelic of the, the temple in heaven. And Isaiah is having a vision. So it says, that, and above it stood the seraphim. Another order of the angels would be cherubim. If you had one, you'd have a cherub. More than one is cherubim. And likewise here we have seraphim. Each one had six wings. With two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he did fly. Even though these are specially created angel beings to lead in worship and praise of the Lord, they still cannot look on the glory, the Shekinah glory of Almighty God. So with two they have to cover their face. And with two they cover their feet, which is the part of their anatomy most likely to come into contact with our sinful world. And with two they did fly. And the Bible says... And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy. In the Hebrew, that's kavos, kadosh, kavosh. In other words, set apart like no other. As they are singing and shouting and praising their worship to the Lord in his presence, in his temple, and they're uh, bringing to attention the most important attribute of God, his holiness. Set apart like no other. Literally what they're singing and shouting and saying is, Dear God of heaven, there is none other like you. And they're giving him credit for his holiness. The whole earth is full of his glory. Revelation chapter 4 verse 8. You see a similar picture there around the throne room of heaven. 
you also have angel beings created for God. One is, uh, has the appearance of a lion, one the calf, one a man, and one an eagle. But it says each one of them has six wings. And Revelation chapter 4 verse 8 says, They rest not, day and night, singing and shouting, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which is and was and is to come. Dear friends, heaven is filled with worship. Now, it is possible that you could attend a church service tonight somewhere in Ash County, in Wilkes County, in Watauga or Allegheny County. And if you were to go and want to really experience a fresh touch of God and, and they were to sing songs like we've heard tonight and we were to be around people, you might experience emotion, you might experience some hand raising, you might experience some shouting, some praising, even some hugging and crying. But it is possible in our day to enter into a reverent church. And if you were to start raising your hand or start shouting, people might look at you funny. Because we just don't act like that in church. Not in our church. And if you used to actually leave your seat and get happy because you're praising the Lord, there is some churches where you could have an usher come and either ask you to sit down or to be escorted out. But if I read my Bible right, everywhere we read about heaven, we read about the worship and the praise and the singing and the shouting to Jesus. And if our Bible's correct, those folks that have a hard time with our worshiping and praising down here is going to have a mighty hard time when they get to heaven, aren't they? So let's just go ahead and establish for tonight at least. Sing and shout and praise all you want to. Just make sure Pastor Jackie can understand every syllable of it, okay? They're praising. They are worshiping. They are in God's praise. John chapter 4, verse 24. God's a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And now is the time when the Father is seeking such to worship him. He wants us to worship him. He wants us to praise him. God's praise. But verse 4, God's presence. And the post of the door was shaken by the voice of him who cried out. And the house was filled with smoke. And this is given indication to God's presence. We see a picture of that in Acts chapter 16, verse 25 and 26. And you remember Paul and Silas sitting in the jail cell at Philippi at midnight. And every, all the prisoners began to hear them pray and praise. They began to sing and they began to pray. And they all heard it. And the Bible says the foundation of the prison was shaken. The doors flung open and all their shackles fell off. Why? Because God inhabits the praise of his people. And when they started praying and praising, God showed up. Would to God that he would show up in our church services or in our revival meetings and shake us up. Amen. I mean, shake us up real good. Change us so that when we go home, we do not go home the same way we came. Amen. And that happened to Paul and Silas. It happened to the Philippian jailer. It happened to the other prisoners. And it happens to good old Isaiah right here. We see his comprehension of a holy encounter. That takes us to number two in verse five. And we see his confession in a humbling effect. All this is going on. And then Isaiah says, I see myself. Isaiah saw himself. Woe is me, for I am undone. The word undone there is domal in the Hebrew. That means I am destroyed. I am ruined. I am poured out. I am broken. See, there's no problem with your praising. There's no problem with your shouting. There's no problem with your worshiping. But all of us at the same time must have those moments, whether it's in an old-fashioned altar, whether it's in the privacy of our own personal prayer closet, where we humble ourselves before Almighty God and realize who He is and how big He is and how small we truly are. Isaiah comes back from all that worship and praise that he's been experiencing as the old black spiritual says, with his heart beneath his knees. And he's broken. And it is confession time. And it's a humbling effect. And he sees himself. Woe is me. I'm undone. I am a man of unclean lips. 
and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. The first thing Isaiah does when he has this holy encounter in the presence of, his of the living Lord is he confesses his sin. I'm a man of unclean lips. He confesses before God. He repents. Revival cannot, will not be revival until the church and the individual Christians are willing to repent. John the Baptist preached it, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus came right along behind him and preached it, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. First thing Isaiah did when he realized he was in the presence of the Lord is he repented. We must be willing to repent when the Holy Spirit convicts our heart. Psalms 139, 23, O Lord, search me and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. See if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in thy way everlasting. Oh, he saw himself. He saw a society. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. He confesses not only his personal sins. He confesses the sins of his society and his people also. God, we, we help us to all repent. Help us to get right. The biggest thing and the most important thing any of us can do when it comes to the government or the politics, first and foremost, is pray, pray, pray. Pray. He saw a society, but he saw a Savior. And he tells us why in this confession. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of host why do I confess why do I pray for my society because I've seen Jesus I, I've met with Jesus I went to temple I went to church and I really had a personal encounter with Jesus and it changed my life oh he's humble now he's so humble God has brought him back humble God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble how many of you know we got to be humble I mean, God will keep us humble. You know that? Sometimes I think God gives pastors wives to help keep us humble. I remember back many, many years ago, early at Fishing Creek Arbor Baptist Church, hadn't been there many years, they had this thing they called Pastor Appreciation Day. And we had Pastor Appreciation Day, and we had a nice dinner. And when we got home, there was all these really, really nice cards. So we went into the living room, turned on the football game, and I began to open cards. I remember one of those cards, it was from, from Sister Shelby, such a sweet, sweet, precious lady in our church. And, and I said, Chastity, listen to this. Guess what Shelby, guess what Shelby said about me? Said, David, you're a model pastor. Chastity said, model? I said, yes, what Shelby said, I'm a model pastor. She went and got Webster's Dictionary. Sit back down. And she looked up the word model. So Shelby said you was a model pastor? I said, that's what she says. Model, small imitation of the real thing. <laughs> I kept opening cards and I kept looking. And I, I opened another card and I said, well, well this card is from Miss Ava. And Ava sends beautiful, sweet, sweet cards. And, and I told Chastity, I said, you know what Ava had to say? She said, what's that? I said, Ava had to say that I was a warm pastor. Hey, that's sweet. I'm warm. I'm a warm pastor. Chastity, she's still holding her Webster's Dictionary. She starts flipping it over, and she says, you're warm. I said, well, Ava said, you're warm. Not so hot. <laughs> See, God will bring us down. God will humble us. So we see his comprehension of a holy encounter, his confession in a humbling effect. But let's go to verse, verse 6. Look at his cleansing in a healing experience. His cleansing and a healing experience. First of all, there is required participation. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hands a live coal, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. What's happening with Isaiah now? He's confessed. He's repented. He's at the temple. This is a heavenly vision, but he's gone to an earthly sanctuary, an earthly place. And at worship that day, they had been sacrificing animals there at the outer court. You know, you've seen the diagrams. And out there was the altar of sacrifice. And the worshiper would lay his hand on the head of the innocent animal, representing a transference of sin from the worshiper and his family to that of the innocent animal. 
he would take the instrument and kill the animal and spill the blood. Why? Hebrews 9.22, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. 1 John chapter 1, verse 7, the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us of all sin. 1 Peter, the precious blood of Jesus Christ is what has redeemed us. And he would shed the blood of the sacrifice, take the carcass of the dead animal, and place it on the altar of burnt offering. Why? Ezekiel 18.4, the soul that sinneth shall surely die. Why? Because Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death. Death is required. And blood being spilled is required. And a blood sacrifice is required for, this, for our sins. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world, the perfect, spotless, unblemished Lamb of God that died on Calvary's cross for our sins. But as this is happening, Isaiah sees one of those angels, and he flies out there to the outer court, and he goes to the altar of burnt offering, and he takes those tongs from up off the altar, and he reaches down and he gets one of those live orange red burning coals in those tongs and that angel turns around and he looks at Isaiah then he turns and he begins to fly toward Isaiah he's got those tongs in one of his wings he's got that red live burning coal in those tongs Isaiah didn't fall off the turnip truck on the way to temple today folks and Isaiah realizes as that angel flies towards him, that live red burning coal is getting ready to come into a part of his come into contact with part of his anatomy somewhere. And everything in Isaiah says, run! But he can't do it. He's so transfixed by all that's going on. All he can do is stand and watch. And the angel flies right up to Isaiah, raises those tongs, places that live red burning coal right to his lips, and Isaiah winces in pain. Only to discover there is no pain. The pain has already been endured and felt by the innocent animal on the altar of sacrifice and burnt offering. And now it only cleanses, it only heals, it only purges him. There's a purification. It says, he has touched my mouth and said, this has touched your mouth and your iniquity is taken away and your sin is purged. It is called for. It is atoned for. It is covered. Don't we want to get that at temple? Don't we want to get that at church? Don't we want to get that at revival at Warrensville? Thank God for healing. How many of you thank God for healing? How many of you pray for God? How many of you prayed this past week for God to heal somebody you love? We all have. You've got a prayer list. Fishing Creek Arbor's got a prayer list. Right here sits a dear, dear, dear precious young lady, and we prayed for her, and now our prayer is God keep her healed. And that's what I pray. God healed her. It was miraculous. Right back there's another young lady. Her husband, one of my best friends. And God did a miracle there. He healed him. And now my prayer, God, keep Mark healed. You've healed him. We thank you for the healing. Keep him healed. God still heals. And we still pray for healing. And we'll keep praying for healing until God calls us home. And many of you know people that God's healed. We know people that God's healed. But the best experience of healing the most important experience of healing that ever ever happens is when a lost person comes into a church like Warsville Baptist Church and they stand here during an invitation and they hang on to the pew and the song is being sung and the Holy Spirit is convicting the Holy Spirit is tugging and finally they step out and they come forward and they bow down in an old fashioned altar and a preacher or a deacon or a lady or a man prays with them and they ask Jesus to forgive their sins to, to heal them and forgive their sins. And they ask God to save them. And they stand up. They came down an aisle, a lost sinner on the way to an eternal hell. They prayed and they stood up a safe saint on the way to an eternal, he eternal heaven. That's the greatest healing example that could ever, ever happen, folks. It's eternal and it's spiritual and it is inward. Oh, we see. We see his cleansing, and there's a received purification. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be white as wool. Oh, we see his cleansing. 
We see his confession. And then last of all, we see his commission in an honest effort. His commission in an honest effort. Verse 8. Now think about all that Isaiah has been through at church today. He has a holy encounter. He experienced the Lord high and lifted up. And a lot of worship and praise has gone on. And it broke his heart. So he confessed. And he was humbled. And he asked God to forgive him. And he repented. And then he had this healing experience. This cleansing. He was cleansed by God. And then he hears. I heard the, vo the voice of the Lord saying. Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Can you imagine that maybe at temple that day that Isaiah's looking around? Who's going to respond to that? Who's going to respond to that call, to that commission? What else could Isaiah do? What kind of man would Isaiah be if he had been through all that in the temple church service that day and he responded any other way he raises his hand says Lord over here here am I why don't you just send me after all you've done for me a holy encounter healing experience my confession you received it I'll go he says two things Isaiah says first of all I am available here am I I wonder who at Warrensville tonight would just be willing in an invitation tonight to say here am I well I don't know what God's going to tell me to do no Isaiah didn't either Jackie didn't either. But I think tonight he, he just wants some who am I? Here am I. Here am I. First of all, he says, I am available. We need to always be willing to say I'm available. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 2. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as living sacrifices, wholly acceptable unto, unto God, which is your reasonable service. He says, I'm available, but I'm agreeable. Send me. I'm available, here am I, I'm agreeable, send me. Where? Wherever you want me to go, God. The co-worker, the classmate, the neighbor down the street, wherever you want me to go. Maybe the Lord's saying it's time to start Sunday school. Here am I, send me. Maybe it's time to start going to midweek service. Here am I, send me. Maybe it's time to start doing something else for the Lord. I don't know, God will tell us. God will tell us. But he wants some people that will say, I'm available I'm agreeable. Notice we don't read Isaiah's resume here. He doesn't say, Isaiah, are you qualified to do what I'm about to send you to do? He does not want our ability this evening nearly as much as he wants our availability. And he'll take our availability. And he, with his spirit, will supply all the ability needed if we'll just give the availability when Saul was converted on the road to Damascus, you remember what he said in Acts chapter 9, verse 6? Lord, what will you have me to do? I think all God wants tonight at Warrensville is just some availabilities. I'll tell you this and I'm done. It's one of my favorite little stories. The Fishing Creek Arbor groups, they've heard it before. But I just love it. It was the early 1900s. There was a mom who had a little boy and she loved the piano. She just loved it. Her favorite instrument. She never learned to play it, but she always wanted to. So she was determined her son was going to learn how to master the piano. She paid for his lessons. He went a couple of times a week. But then when it came time to practice, he always wanted to go out in the backyard and play football with the neighbors or go out in the street and play kickball or go fishing. And she gets so frustrated, I'm paying for all these piano lessons. But he won't practice. 
Then one day she picked up the paper. And it said, the master, Paderewski, was coming to town for a piano concert. Ignace Jan Paderewski, the Polish famous pianist. She said, that's it. I'll get tickets. He will hear the master play, and he will become inspired, and he'll practice every day. She got really, really good seats. They arrived very early. They got down really, really close to the stage. And people were gathering in. And as they were gathering in, some people from work had come in behind her, and she was turned around and engaged in a conversation with them. And while she's talking to the people behind her, all of a sudden, the entire auditorium hears ringing out chopsticks. Is that chopsticks? Close, close, oh, cl close enough. We'll go with it. <laughs> she turned, and the seat where her son had been sitting was now empty. She looked up on the stage, and her heart jumped up in her throat when she saw that her her son had gone and sit at the grand piano, Paderewski's piano, and started playing the only song he had ever bothered to learn in the piano lessons. Chopsticks. She said, what do I do? If I go get him, everybody here will know he's mine. If I don't go get him, there's no telling what he'll do. At that time, Paderewski steps out on the stage. The crowd begins to respond, and he silences them. He drops his cape, and he slips right up behind the young man playing chopsticks. And he reaches over and he whispers into his ear. This is a true story. He whispers in his ear. Then he reaches his arms around the young man. And he whispers in his ear again. And then he begins to play. As the young man plays chopsticks. And he leans down and whispers in his ear. And he jumps over the young man's hands, back over the young man's hands, and they play a magnificent piece together. They stand, hold hands, and bow to a standing ovation. And he sends him back to the seat beside of his mama and does his concert. And his mama asks her son, Son, what did Paderewski, what did the master Paderewski whisper in your ear he said mom he just said don't stop play what you know I'm with you I've got you just don't stop trust me don't stop it may seem like the only thing we got to offer at Warrensville tonight is just a simple little chopstick idea when it comes to this Christian life and Christian walk but Jesus wants us to bring our chopsticks to this altar. And he's going to wrap his nail-scarred arms around us, his nail-scarred hands around us. He's going to say, just give me what you got. I'll do the rest. I've got you. I got this. And I'm going to do some amazing things for you. Please stand with us. As Pastor Jackie comes, as they come and prepare our hymn of invitation, Isaiah just went to church service like he had done all of his life. But on this particular day, he saw the Lord high and lifted up. And when God told him to do something, Isaiah did it. And it changed his life forever. And that was in 740 B.C. And we're still talking about and reading about it in 2023 at Warrensville Baptist Church in Ash County tonight. God will do it. He just wants some here in my sin means. If you've never been saved, come and give your heart and your life to Jesus. Father, in Jesus' name, we just pray that you'll take this invitation, take this song, take this altar call. We pray your will would be done in every heart and life. And that when we leave tonight, we can all be, will, be able to say, I saw the Lord at Warrensville, high and lifted up. And I told him, Lord, here am I, send me. If there's anything you can do with me, here am I. Send me. Amen.
people will be first tonight to step out. Amen. What a message that we needed at Warrensville because of just some things that we're facing, right? Big challenges. And what did the Lord say? He says, keep going. Keep going. I've got it. It's nothing too big for our God. Who will be first tonight? Step out and come and pray. Maybe just pray for our church. next we got some things to pray about don't we folks who will be next to come and pray blessed us so much this year. You know, it's okay sometimes to step out and not come and ask for anything, but just be thankful for what he's done and what he's going to do for our church. need to come. Revival. Don't leave anything going to the 